Welcome to the Applied Biosystems Tech Talk video series, where we break down real-time PCR to make it easier for you. High-quality reproducible data begin with your experimental plan. For instance, how many replicates do we really need? No one wants to use up more reagents than necessary. To keep reagent use at a minimum while still being able to catch any errors in pipetting, we recommend running triplicates. Let's look at an example to see why. Here is a set of replicates for our target. The CT values are 20, 19, and 37. Hmm, looks like maybe I forgot to add sample to this well, but that is not a problem. With triplicates, we can clearly say that the CT of 37 is an outlier and should be removed. I simply click to omit, update my data by clicking analyze again, and voila, I can move on and still use this data point for the sample. But let's look at another example. What if I only ran duplicates? Now I have two samples with CTs of 22 and 31. Hmm, that's a lot of variation in a replicate. I don't really want to average them, but I don't have any justification for using one over the other. Now I'm forced to omit the entire sample from my data. So now we've seen why triplicates are a good practice, but do note that there are cases in which replicates would not be required, such as large screening projects. In these studies, many targets are tested at once to find significant hits, and those hits are later validated with more scrutiny and more replicates. So how do we ensure that our triplicates are tight? Ideally, the deviation in CT among replicates is less than 0.5. Let's go through some recommendations for best practices for tight replicates. Number one. Make a master reaction mix that contains the total volume of master mix, assay, and water needed for the total number of reactions. Always include a 10% overage of each reaction mix component to account for pipetting losses. Thoroughly mix the cocktail by pipetting up and down 10 to 12 times. Mix again before use if the cocktail will be sitting around so that the components don't settle out. Number two. Dispense the reaction mix into your sample plate, then add your samples to the wells. Make sure to mix by pipetting about 10 times and do not reuse pipette tips. Number three, use properly calibrated pipettes. Number four, make dilutions when needed. Don't pipette on reasonably small volumes less than two microliters. For example, instead of pipetting one microliter, Make a 1 to 10 dilution, and then pipette 10 microliters. Number 5. Spin down the plate before running. After mixing and sealing the plate or tubes, spin down to make sure everything is at the bottom of the wells or tubes. Check to make sure there are no bubbles at the bottom of the wells either. Number 6. Transfer aliquots of reagents to fresh tubes as needed to minimize the number of freeze-thaw cycles. We recommend making aliquots of primers or assays in order to keep the number of freeze thaws to a minimum, ideally fewer than 10. These practices will help to ensure that your replicates are as close as possible, allowing you to be confident that any gene expression changes indicated are real. But remember, replicates and plate setup are just two components that contribute to quality data. Check out other Applied Biosystems Tac Talk videos on our website, thermofisher.com slash tactalk.